Um, so my family um, uh, raised me on a miniature golf course, which people usually laugh and go, oh, that makes sense. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, we had it in our family for 30 years, and then my parents had to sell it when they got older, and then I freaked out. So I wrote a book, which is what you do when you freak out. Um, I went to graduate school to learn how to write something longer than a page, because I have poetry, you don't have to do that. <laughs> Um, so I wrote 300 pages or something, which is quite remarkable. How many, should I do which section? I'm going to do... The stuff on. Uh, by request. <laughs> <laughs> um, explain the structure. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's so cute I would do anything. And he's like, go in the back room and cook up spaghetti. I'm, just trying, I'm, like, to help, okay. I'm just trying to help you market. It's so sweet, isn't it? Yeah, thanks. Okay, so uh, by request, I'm doing this book. Okay, so... Um, uh, a miniature golf course has 18 holes, and in Mark Hayes, each one was very different from each other, and some of them had motors and all that. So I, my book has 18 chapters, one for every hole. Ta -da. Nice. It's based on the theme, of, the theme. There's a theme for each chapter based on that hole. Like, number three is the most difficult hazard, so that chapter is about times when everything kind of sucked. <laughs> and on from there. Anyway, between um, chapters three and four, we have a snack break. So I have a little, I'm going to read part of the snack break. Because while you're playing, you take a, you go get a snack. So this is called uh, How to Make Snow Cones. Yes. First, don't kill anyone. <laughs> <laughs> don't make them choke on small bits of plastic, which might happen if you push ice chunks into the grinder with the plastic scoop. Something everyone in my family does on a regular basis. The ice clogs when you dump it in. Usually the chunks are too big. Also, the chute is metal. Ice can stick like a wet tongue on a swing set. You're going to have to shove it a little, but not so hard the plastic scoop gets mauled. <laughs> the shaved ice is white and shiny. By some strange happenstance, the plastic is too. It's really <laughs> hard to know if you ground up the scoop or not. If you think you might have cheap plastic into the shaved ice while the customer looks in eagerly through the front window of the snack shack, just calmly scoop out the snow from the plexi bin and dump it into the yellow bucket below and say, I don't want to start over. I didn't like that bunch. <laughs> and then put more ice chunks into the machine. A customer will not know of his proximity to death by choking, and in fact may actually be flattered that he took the time to chop more ice, better ice, for his long-awaited snow cone. One truism about tourists, they like to feel important. A delay, when it's a delay for them and not a delay for someone else, can be interpreted as evidence of your personal interest and a wish to deliver them perfection. Second, the grape flavor tastes watery. Don't push the grape. <laughs> <laughs> it's all true. Uh, say cherry, blue raspberry, grape, or combo. The cherry is the single best flavor, and you will say so if asked, but generally you don't volunteer the information. Mom says to give one squirt into the ice at the bottom of the cone, then two squirts into the dome on top. Do it slow so the ice doesn't dent. Add a straw. The best ice is the cold ice, but customers rarely get that. We grind up ice for snow cones one at a time because we don't want to get enough, we don't get enough orders to shave up a mountain of ice and have it melt there all day. Dad would have a fit. Wasteful, wasteful. For one snow cone, we chop up one snow cone's worth of ice. For four snow cones, four snow cones worth. But the best ice comes after five or six snow cones. The whirling blade gets good and cold. The ice chop for the seventh or eighth will be so light and fluffy that it may not even pack into a ball. If that happens, just dig into the mound with your scoop until you're at the bottom and add some wet, bad ice to your ball. People like their ice in a ball. It's how they imagine it should be. But we know better. We have become snow cone snobs. <laughs> Mom and Dad let us have one free snow cone a day, but we don't bother if it's made from wet ice, even on the hottest day of July when we are dying. We wait until the blades are cold from serving up ice for other people, and only then add a few chunks for ourselves. The fluffy ice won't form into domes so it doesn't look picture perfect, but it is the kind my sisters and I eat at any chance. The ice chopped is last is like the snow that falls on your mitten in winter, and you can stare at it, so tiny, so cold and so tight. If you see a bug inside the machine where the ice comes out, you can wipe it out with a paper towel even while the customer stares at you from less than two feet away. They won't see that you're removing an insect. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. I'm going to end with that. Thank you so much. <laughs>